Alrighty then, hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla, and I'm going to teach you how to make this galaxy painting. Now, if you're looking for last minute gift ideas, I'm gonna teach you how to do this really pretty vantage point kind of galaxy looking starry night on the lake with some foresty. It's just the right amount of galaxy to give to your family members or friends that love galaxies or just galactic crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go over the paints that we need. So I use the very cheap brand called Americana. I get it from Michaels. They're like $1.99 a piece. They're just craft paint. They're craft acrylic paint. That's all I use when I do every single one of my paintings. Uh, so you're gonna need purple, black, and blue, and this white. <laughs> it's just a big white. I really need a lot of white when it comes to all my paintings. Now I got this canvas from Michaels. It's a nine by 12 you're going to create a vantage point with your ruler. Now a vantage point is like two lines meeting to a dot into the distance. So if you've ever done any perspective drawing before, what you're going to do is somewhat close to the bottom of your canvas, you're going to create a vantage point. Now you want this towards the bottom of the canvas, leave it like five inches, like however tall your canvas is. You want it to take up like 25% of the bottom of your canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload some paint. I don't use too much and this is all I really needed for the entire painting. Now let's go ahead and talk about where to start with galaxies. I've taught many galaxy painting tutorials before. The key, the very biggest key I can give you to painting a really well done galaxy painting is to do more than two layers when it comes to your paint. You really wanna make your paint thick on the canvas. So what you do is you go ahead and start laying out a good layer and I just mix all my colors together. But notice I do not mix in black with the very first layer. I just use my white, my blue, my purple, and that's all I use. I use the colors and the white. I do not use the black until the second layer. And I just go ahead and I put those in different globs around each other, different paint strokes. And to blend them together, you're gonna need a fan brush or a brush that has some kind of, you know the brushes that you get in the packages of brushes, paint brushes, that have like a bristly kind of end? It looks like a horsehair brush. You're gonna want to use one of those brushes to blend in, but I use a fan brush because Bob Ross taught me how to use a fan brush, so I love blending with my fan brushes. Now the thing about the two sections, so the sky and the lake are both going to be galaxies. So you see, I just, where my vantage point is, where, where my lines met, I went ahead and left that white space. So go ahead and leave that white space and continue going and, you know, just spreading out and getting that first layer done for your sky and your lake. Now the thing about my sky is I make more of a V shape. You see up at top, the V shape, it kind of looks like a tornado. I make a white tornado and that's going to be key like it's looking up like way up like the clouds are making this sort of tornado and it's like meeting in the middle this big light source so that's what you're really going for is you want to make some kind of tornado coming from the top and going a little bit towards the middle of your painting After my first layer is completely dry, that's when I'm, I'm going to come in with my second layer and I'm going to start adding the black into my colors. And remember, I'm keeping this tornado of white in the middle, so I'm bringing the black kind of towards that little tornado of white, but I still, I'm trying to keep that open for the white. Now, what I'm doing again is I'm just globbing on the sections of color. So I've got purple and blue and I'm globbing on black, but I'm leaving some white spaces open. And I am blending with my fan brush those colors. And 
what in the mix a little bit i still want to keep adding a little bit more white and plain colors as well and i'm kind of keeping where my vantage point is i'm keeping that lighter and i will do the same thing on the un underside so where the lake is going to be i'm keeping the bottom lighter so i'm not really putting that much black into the bottom because that's where my trees are going to go and if there's too much black around the trees the trees are not going to stand out. The silhouette of my forest trees will not stand out. So that's why I'm I'm keeping it pretty dark towards the top and I'm keeping it nice and light towards the bottom of the lake. And as you, as you can see, I'm still adding a bunch of white, adding tons of white into the mix and I'll blend this all in. And I keep I kind of wait a little while. I don't wait too much, but while the paint is still dry, I still try to blend but I will wait for layers to dry and come back to it before I start adding a whole other layer. Now I am keeping it nice and dark towards the corners, very similar to what I did in the sky. I kept the corners dark and making my darker colors, but I'm keeping it nice and light and mixed with my purple and blue and my white and keeping it along that vantage point very, very light because we want our trees to stand out as opposed to blending in with a darker background. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're planning out colors and blending to keep your corners dark but keep that vantage point along the line, that little horizon line that we have, make sure you keep it light. Walked away and I came back and making a whole other layer. I'm just adding, keeping that middle open, that little tornado it's still there I'm still trying to keep it nice and light and adding more and more white and dark blues dark purples and just blending them in together and adding more lightness into my tornado path of where my stars are going to go it just really brightens it up just a little bit more so that's why I wanted to keep that like pasture tornado Now starting with our silhouette line. What I did is I went to the very end of the vantage point and I went ahead and I made a solid black line to the right. I went ahead and I started making trees off in the distance to represent where my trees are gonna go to. But I started all the way to the right and nothing is precise with trees, but keep in mind that you should leave a couple of empty spaces open. And to not confuse myself or confuse you when you are painting this painting, I just went ahead and I started with each individual tree and after I made each tree, I went ahead and I made the reflection on the lake. So the thing is that the bottom of the trees, you don't see me doing it now, but the bottom of the trees should all be connecting and look like one big blob of black on the vantage line. So all of that should be connecting together and just look like it's just a big mass of forest trees. That's what you should keep in mind, but to not confuse yourself, try to do each tree at a time so do one tree at a time and then do the reflection and then go on to the next one now on the right side i have they just start getting smaller and smaller as they get to the vantage point Alright, so I start with the next side and I do the exact same process. I kind of gave up on doing tree after tree, but it does really help and it doesn't really get you too confused. It's a, it's, it's a little bit different when you get to the smaller trees. That's why I stopped doing it back and forth. I think the bigger trees are a lot more confusing than the smaller trees. 
Now the thing about this one is I went ahead and I made a bigger tree and then a little tree and then I made a bigger tree. So I had, it was a little bit of a pattern. It's a little different from the right side, but I like the fact that it's a little different compared to the right side just because it kind of, you know, it just makes it look like it's not a mirror reflection from side to side, but it actually is, you know, a different side to the forest. <laughs> And you can really tell how much the black trees, the silhouette of the trees on the lake and on the horizon line, on our vantage point line, how much they stand out because they don't have a dark part of the galaxy surrounding them. So that's why I said keep your vantage point line very light when it comes to your galaxy and your lake. And for the stars, I don't know, I'm very different. I don't go in and I don't splatter. I individually do every single dot for my stars. I just really think, I mean, it doesn't take too much time. It may be tedious for some artists, but I just, I enjoy making little dots, making my little stars all over my galaxies. That's why I always put them in individually. No, uh, yeah, but yeah, I hope that this tutorial on this last minute galaxy painting helps anybody with gift ideas if they have need any help when it comes to gifts for Christmas, birthdays, whatever. But now you have a fun galaxy painting to give to one of your loved ones or your friends. I hope you all have a most wonderful day and I will see you all later. Bye!